has no rage, like love to hate your turn, nor hell of hearing, like a best friend scorn. This wise quote penned in 1697 by playwright and poet William Congreve perfectly summarized the case that you just witnessed, Your Honor. It's the backbone of our story and the structure of our narrative. Reagan Klein and Sawyer Smith were best friends for eight entire years. They were best friends until their friendship abruptly turned south for petty reasons. Sawyer Smith decided to pursue a career in social media and surprisingly found success in their endeavors. They then shared their victories with their co-workers. That is, until one of those co-workers had had enough. Reagan Klein, in retaliation, tried to catfish their now friend turned foe. But not only did their plan not work, it in fact backfired. Sawyer Smith ended up gaining followers. Angering the defendant, they then began a continual onslaught of mean words. They began to publicly humiliate, harass, and embarrass Sawyer Smith. But still it didn't work, and still it backfired. Because Sawyer Smith then struck back by revealing a long-kept secret that resulted in the firing of the defendant. But not just causing the defendant to lose their job, Your Honor. A $34,000 lawsuit. The defendant became furious. They became enraged. They were seeing red and they lost their mind. In their haze, they posted on Sawyer Smith's now page, You deserve to die. I'm going to get you for this. Just you wait, I hate you. When you're dead, no one will even miss you, you monstrous, slimy person. You think you can stick me with a $34,000 lawsuit? Just get away with it? Watch your back, Sawyer. I'm coming to get you. An unconditional, unequivocal, and immediate threat. Your Honor, the defendant threatened to kill Sawyer Smith. Thankfully, this was not the case. <coughs> but the defendant, clearly not in their right mind and clearly upset, attempted to carry out their threat the only way they knew how by trying to swap their enemy. That brings us directly to count one, a false report of emergency in California Penal <coughs> Code 148.3. The first of six elements required to prove this count is that the defendant reported or caused a report to be made. Tonight, you heard from qualified expert witness Dr. Dakota Chung, who determined through a reliable process that due to the similarities between the writings of the defendant and the writings in the text tip, the defendant was, in fact, the undisputed author of the text tip. Or as to element two, the defendant reported to a city, county, and or state department of false emergency, it was provided by SWAT officer Keegan Lopez when he testified about his team receiving the text tip on August 14th. As to element three, the defendant reported a true emergency exists. It can clearly be seen in Exhibit A, where the defendant lied about there being a very dangerous hostage situation at the residence of Sawyer Smith. As to element five, the defendant knowing that the report could cause death or grievous bodily injury. Now, this was proven during the cross-examination of Sam Clausting, where Ms. Cla Mr. Clausting testified that the defendant was present and engaged during a news program about swatting. Not a swatting incident in which someone was shot. Now, thankfully, in this case, no one was shot. No one was killed. But Sawyer Smith broke their leg, filling the sixth and final element of count one beyond a reasonable doubt. Your Honor, the people of the state of California have proven all the elements of count one beyond a reasonable doubt. But, Your Honor, let's look at the timeline in our case. Let's look at the means, the motive, and the opportunity of the defendant to have sent the false report of an emergency. Let's begin with the events of August 14th. Before August 14th, the defendant had catfish Sawyer Smith. The catfishing then escalated to humiliation and harassment. Your Honor, though it has been brought up that there may not have been a past animosity between the defendant and Sawyer Smith, it was, in a sense, a one-sided history of animosity because the defendant repeatedly became upset as Sawyer Smith didn't react to the catfishing and they didn't react to the harassment, they didn't react to the humiliation. Therefore, the anger in the defendant began to build up. And on the day of August 14th, their anger reached its peak. After being fired 
from their job after being threatened with a $34,000 lawsuit after realizing they wouldn't be able to pay off their student loans, that they had lost one of their only jobs, Reagan Klein snapped. Your Honor, on August 14th, they sent the threat, the threat that said, you deserve to die, and that they were going to get them. Later that evening, they were at their house with Marlo Patterson, a very close friend, and Cameron Holmes. At 8.57, Marlo Patterson was on a phone call. At 9.02, Cameron Holmes went downstairs, leaving Marlo Patterson and Raven Klein to be the only two people in the apartment. Your Honor, according to Cameron Holmes' testimony, he was downstairs for 10 full minutes, leaving the defendant 10 full minutes to write the text tip in question. Your Honor, even if you don't believe that they had this time, let's look at the timeline after 9.08. At 9.08, the text tip was sent. At 9.11, the defendant was on the phone. Later that evening, during Officer Keegan Lopez's investigation, Cameron Holmes handed him the phone without looking at it, and there was the text tip on the screen. Your Honor, if you believe the defendant's testimony that they were on the phone at 9-11, you must believe that they saw the text tip that was on the screen. Why didn't they report it? Why didn't they say anything to Cameron? Uh, thank you, Counsel. Uh, closing argument for the defense. Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> Your Honor, may I have permission to approach the exhibits during my closing argument? You do have permission to do so. And may I request a time check as to the time remaining? Yes. The defense currently has six minutes and 27 seconds. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Your Honor. My client is not perfect. She rashly insulted Sawyer Smith and catfished him on social media through chatting and commenting. But Miss Reagan Klein is not guilty of a false report of an emergency. Your Honor, actions speak louder than words, and Miss Klein's actions show that she has a heart of gold and would never harm anyone. Miss Klein's impulsive words on social media do not reflect her true character. Today, the prosecution must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Ms. Klein is guilty of a false report of an emergency. However, Ms. Klein's actions and the evidence you heard today point to the contrary. The prosecution has failed to prove all six elements beyond a reasonable doubt. But today, we're going to focus on the main element of did Reagan Klein send the tip? Your Honor, to prove this, they must show that Miss Reagan Klein was the only one with the means, the motive, and the opportunity to send the false tip. However, they cannot prove this beyond a reasonable doubt because there were others in the apartment the night the tip was sent, namely Cameron Holmes, with just as much means, motive, and opportunity. First, Miss Klein was not the only one with the means to send the tip. The text to tip was sent on the night of August 14th from Mr. Holmes' flip phone. And where was Mr. Holmes' phone the entire night? It was lying on a table, charging, out in the open where anyone in the apartment could have picked it up and sent the false tip. And you heard today from Ms. Patterson that Cameron Holmes was touching the phone multiple times throughout the night. Second. Miss Klein was not the one with enough motive to send the false tip. Your Honor, Miss Klein was best friends with Mr. Smith for eight years, and Miss Klein would never hurt anyone. You heard today about a swatting incident, and when Miss Klein saw that someone could get shot as the result of swatting, Miss Klein was horrified. However, the other two employees who also saw the news story and who were both in the apartment the night the tip was sent were two people who were fed up with Mr. Smith's incessant bragging and were even willing to catfish him. These two people, not Miss Klein, had the motive to send a false report. Moreover, one of these two people, 
Mr. Cameron Holmes even had the motive to frame Miss Reagan Klein. You heard today that Mr. Holmes was jealous of Miss Klein and Miss Patterson's friendship. Mr. Holmes felt excluded. <coughs> Mr. Holmes wanted Miss Patterson, Miss Patterson, to himself. Mr. Holmes thought that Miss Klein was a jerk. And just a few hours before the swatting incident, Mr. Holmes overheard Miss Klein complaining about him. Mr. Holmes wanted Miss Klein out of the picture. And to frame Miss Klein and have her arrested for false report would do just that. Finally, the opportunity. Your Honor, there were three people in the apartment the night the tip was sent. Two people besides Miss Klein with the opportunity to send the tip. The prosecution has claimed that Cameron Holmes was downstairs for 10 minutes and thus unable to send the tip. However, the order delivery history that you saw today shows that the pizza was delivered at 9.02, giving Mr. Holmes enough time to get the pizza, come back upstairs, and send the false tip at 9.08 p.m. Your Honor, there were three people in the apartment the night the tip was sent. Two people besides Miss Klein with the means, the motive, and the opportunity to send the false tip. <coughs> Moreover, you heard from two expert witnesses today, Dr. Nakoda Chung and Dr. Blake Williams. Dr. Chung's analysis was not comprehensive, as Dr. Chung only focused on the features present in the tip. And recall that Dr. Chung cannot even say for certain that Miss Klein was the author. However, the other expert you heard from today, Dr. Blake Williams, who used the standard time-tested method of linguistics that examines both features and vocabulary choices, concluded that the author of the text to could not have been Miss Klein. <coughs> all the evidence that we have tonight is circumstantial evidence. And according to Calcrum 224, where there are two reasonable conclusions from this circumstantial evidence, the court must side with the conclusion that points to Miss Klein's innocence. Tonight we have two reasonable conclusions. The second conclusion being that Mr. Holmes wrote and sent the tip. A conclusion that not only points to the innocence of Miss Klein, but is even more reasonable. Today, the prosecution has failed to carry their burden. They have failed to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt that Ms. Klein is guilty of false report. There is not enough evidence, particular to Ms. Klein, for this court to convict her. For these reasons, the verdict that is just, appropriate, and correct is one of not guilty. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Rebecca, from the yes, prosecution. Sure. May I proceed? You may. Opposing counsel is correct in stating that actions speak louder than words. But in this case, Your Honor, the defendant's actions point to her being guilty. Her actions of checking the phone at 9-11, showing that she saw the text tip and didn't report it, therefore showing that she sent it. Your Honor, opposing counsel states that Dr. Blake Williams was able to prove that the defendant didn't. But, Your Honor, their testimony is not credible, as tonight they were impeached on the stand. 30 seconds. Your Honor, the people of the state of California have met our burden of proof. We have proven each element beyond a reasonable doubt. Therefore, the people of the state of California respectfully request a verdict of guilty. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. Rebuttal from the defense? Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? You may. Love, hate, scorn, and friendships gone bad. Your Honor, this is a case about friendships gone bad. Cameron Holmes was jealous of losing his best friend, Miss Patterson, to Reagan Klein. Cameron Holmes thought that Miss Klein was a jerk and was willing to frame Miss Klein for false report of an emergency. Mr. Holmes had the motive. And you heard tonight from Miss. Patterson and Ms. Klein, that Mr. Holmes also had the means and the opportunity. Seconds. This provides reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt combined with the order delivery history <coughs> and the testimony of these two witnesses. 
shows that Ms. Klein cannot be found guilty of false report of an emergency. Your Honor, when Ms. Klein looked at her phone, she was looking at the time, not for the text to tip. And this explains why she did not see the tip on the screen. Your Honor, Ms. Klein cannot be found guilty of false report of an emergency. Thank you.